it's easier to put not enough in and add a little bit more than if you overfill it then you got to pull the drain plugs in if you've already put it all back together that's a real pain so anyway put that back on put this wire back on it put this breather plug back in or whatever they call it back into the valve cover and then you put the battery cover back on the battery holder the battery and the air box back in right here I showed it in the video okay you put the bolts in on each side usually I just put all of them in finger tight and then I tighten them afterwards to make sure that they fit good I have better luck that way this is where I use this 12 meter millimeter end wrench to tighten these up right here one on each side and then two down here on the bottom it hooks to the, to the bottom it hooks to the frame also all four of them go to the frame then after you get all those finger tight then you tighten them up and then I didn't show it when I took it out but the starter solenoid is right here and it also holds the, the, some of the fuses it, the rubber deal slides onto this little bracket you would know if you took it off but if you're watching the video through first I'm then going to do it then you got to put this back onto this little bracket to hold it in place and after you get the bottom screws tightened then the CPU probably fell down to the bottom You gotta lift it back up. Okay, you get the C CDI box or CPU, whatever it is. Pulled it back up into place, and then you got the two bolts that fit the 10 millimeter socket. Put them back on. Then you tighten them up good and tight. Okay, and then once you get these tight, I'm using my 10 millimeter T handle to tighten them with it's a lot easier for me and I don't know what the torque specs are I'll have to look in the manual and see but um, I suggest that you contact your Yamaha dealer or look in your it might be in your service manual that came with the snowmobile but tighten those up to the manufacturer's specs The next thing you got to do is put the battery back in. You got the battery here. Make sure you don't get none of the wires underneath it when you set it down into the spot where it goes. Like so. Then it's just a reversal of putting these cables back on. Make sure you get the red one hooked up to the side that has the plus on it. Positive to positive, negative to negative. Positive's on this side, negative's on this side. Okay, once you get the battery terminals good and tight, I'm using a 10 millimeter socket, T-handle wrench. Make sure you put the little rubber protector back on the positive side on the battery. Then you get your battery cover. You place it back over the top. Then you got to tilt the battery forward. Then you slide the cover back down on it. Then you tilt it back where it goes making sure that all these hoses, the fuel lines and everything are clear. This one came undone. There was a little clip that holds those two lines together. Then you hook this little strap back up so that the battery won't bounce around in there. When you're riding down the around on the mountains. Might be the easiest to hook this right side up first. fit because I didn't I don't think I got everything just right this wires in the way a 
when you get the strap done up, make sure you got these two back over here. These are the battery jump posts. You got to make sure they're in this bracket for so when you put everything back together, you'll still be able to jump start if you need to. And you got this in place. This is the starter solenoid with where the fuses are. Got to have those in place. Okay, the battery is back down, secured. Now you probably had to undo this. I know you did because I had to, to get the bracket that holds the battery out. So make sure you put this bolt back in right here. It's just a little vacuum deal that goes to the air box. Put this 10 millimeter bolt back in. Tighten it to manufactured specifications. You don't want it coming loose. And since it's going to go to the air box, you probably want to put this hose back on it. It's an L-shaped hose. It goes on it right here. And it's got this little clamp. You can use pliers or it's pretty easy to do with your fingers. Just make sure that you got this all the way on. And then you tighten it up. Or you slide the clamp up to about the center of it and then make sure that this hose is still out because this is the other hose that goes to the air box everything else make sure this plug did wire didn't come unplugged check everything to make sure because the air box isn't real easy to take on and off okay when you go to put the air box back on these clamps there's a little notch right here in the rubber deal that goes onto the carburetor and the clamps have a spot right built right onto them where they're supposed to fit into that notch and you make sure that all four of them are in that spot and make sure that they're all good and loosened up because otherwise you won't be able to get it back okay on. then you take the air box bring it over to the sled the intake is right here it has to go in first so you tilt it towards the front of the downward towards the front of the machine push it down in there hook up the one hose that you put back on before that goes to this side of the airbox slide that on and on the other side there's the small hose that I mentioned earlier It'd be hiding down here it goes on the airbox right here on the bottom there's a small spot okay I got those hoses back on got the clamp up there where it belongs and then you just line up the where the hoses hook to the carburetors and sometimes you might have to lift the carburetors a little bit to get it to slide on I can't do it with the camera in my hand but you lift it up and you slide on make sure all four of them are in place and then you tighten them up make sure that they're in place on slid all the way on to the carburetor you have to look underneath on the bottom and the top and if you need to open it up and you'll be able to tell from the inside with your finger if it's all the way up in there okay one thing that helps you be able to tell if you got it slid on all the way you undo these four tabs one two three oh I guess there's six of them sorry you undo these six tabs lift up the front of the air box and take the cover off and then just reach inside with your finger and check it all the way around and see if you got the same distance all the way around and if it feels like the carburetor is up to the edge of the boot because there's an edge in there a square edge and if you got all of them up against the square edge then you're ready to tighten them up Okay, now this is where the thread locker comes into play. When you get ready to put this cover back on, I think they call it inspection cover, goes on the bottom. Put thread locker on these bolts, otherwise they'll vibrate out. So I'm going to use a blue thread locker. You can use red if you want, but I believe the book says to suggest blue. Put blue silicone or blue thread locker on all of the all five bolts that go on the bottom. And I also use them for the hex bolts that are on the bottom of this side cover right here because um, 
I have them vibrate out. And after you do that, you're set to go. Start it up, let it run for a while, let it warm up good. And then in the book, I think it says to drive it around a little bit. Short ride. And then you pull the little electrical deal off the top of the dipstick. Pull the dipstick out. Remove the dipstick. I haven't started it, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Anyway, you pull this out, wipe it off. Then you set it back in, but you don't thread it at all. You just set it right in there like that. And then lift it back out and see what the oil level is on it. And if it says full or in the the range where it's supposed to be with little X's are, then you're good to go. If not, add a little bit more. If you accidentally overfilled it, then you'll have to drain some out either from this reservoir, which would probably be the easiest place, or from the bottom. And that's that's the oil change video on the 2003 RX1 Mountain. Thank you. Okay, got it all buttoned up and and uh, I think I got plenty of oil in it. I put 3.8 quarts in it because I changed the filter. Now I'm gonna. It's warm in my shop, so it'll start right up. Watch on the dash. You can see I have no flashing lights. So that means everything's good. I look underneath. Make sure there's no leaks. I have the floor dry down there because I can still throw it when I change the oil. But there's nothing dripping down underneath. I'll let it warm up good. Down the grill warm up. Shut it off. Unhook the little wire. Pull the dipstick out. Get a rag candy there. It's hard to do it with when you're holding the camera in one hand, but anyway, carefully pull that dipstick out so it don't get oil all over everything. Wipe it off real good. And right in here is the operating range where the little X's are. And you want to, it's best to have it on the top side of it. But don't go past it. Because if you overfill it, it'll cause problems. Like blown seals. And it says in the book, do not do it very bad. So if you overfill it, make sure you drain it back out. Okay, now I'm going to put it back in. And I'm not going to thread it in at all, just set it on the top. Lift it back up just far enough I can see it. And it, you can't tell on the camera, but it's right at the top of where the little X's are. And when you put the stick back in, you can feel a little deal there that gets in the way. Well, there's a hole in it. you got to make sure you get that into there or else you break the dipstick. And screw it in. Wipe out the knee spilt oil. Hook the electrical wire back up everything's all ship shape and looking good no leaks so that's the end of this video thanks